Hello, everyone. This is Simon Volta, the Sales Director here at V-Technologies, and thanks for joining uh, today. Um, this afternoon, we're going to be talking about um, five tips that, you know, how we're going to help you optimize your shipping um, within the QuickBooks environment and utilizing our Starship application. So to get started, um, we are going to talk a little bit about um, an introduction to V-Technologies for those of you who are new to us. Um, that might not be using ShipGear or our Starship application, we welcome you and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about us and what we do. Uh, we'll tell you the benefits of Starship overall and then, you know, potential savings. You know, when we talk about optimized shipping costs, um, how can we help you save some money? And we'll talk a little bit about our partnership, you know, that we have with Visible Supply Chain uh, and how we can utilize uh, the post office rates uh, to help you maybe save with those major carriers like FedEx and UPS. And then we'll also talk to you about a cost reduction analysis that is offered by our partner at Visible Supply Chain as well that you could take advantage of with no obligation uh, to seeing how much, you know, uh, spend that you can save on an annual basis as well. So a little bit about us. We are celebrating our 30 year anniversary with Starship this year. Um, v Technology has been around since 1987. Uh, we have uh, 16 years uh, in the Intuit space working with QuickBooks, uh, being one of their goal developers. And then we also have about 10,000 customers uh, nationwide utilizing our application across multiple different ERP platforms. I do have FedEx and UPS listed at the bottom. FedEx, you know, we're a platinum provider uh, today with them uh, and UPS being a strategic partner. And we do participate in their subsidy programs that they offer to customers uh, that help pay for third-party applications such as Starship. So if you are of interest in the Starship application, we highly encourage you to speak to your individual account reps. Uh, for more information on how you can qualify for funds uh, to help pay for the solution that I'm about to show you today. So for those of you who might be using our ShipGear product uh, and looking to migrate to Starship, uh, this is a little bit of a chart that we've created to kind of show you some of the main differences in the features that Starship offers. So uh, the user interface itself, um, you would be leaving WorldShip or Ship Manager altogether, and you would be moving into our Starship application, which is a single platform and where we can basically pull in multiple carriers uh, into one application for you to uh, do things such as print your labels, uh, also rate shop the different carriers all in one application, so therefore you can pick and choose your uh, quickest uh, transit time or your least expensive option uh, for that shipment. We also support line item integration inside of Starship versus ShipGear. Um, so the line items themselves will come in from your QuickBooks sales order, your QuickBooks invoice, uh, we'll allow you to pack those items as you see fit with different packaging sizes that you've saved inside the Starship database. Uh, and then also, we also support third-party applications uh, such as like a fishbowl application or an activate application uh, for like inventory control uh, inside of Starship as well. We have a, our own integration built with those applications. We also offer rate shopping inside of Starship. So as I mentioned, we can you know easily show you uh, which carrier might be most beneficial uh, to you for that particular shipment based on its weight and its dimensions. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit today and show you in the application of when, you know, dimensions make an impact to the overall cost of the shipment. Uh, batch processing is also offered. So for those of you who might be in e-commerce, uh, uh, processing e-commerce orders today through your QuickBooks platform, uh, where you might need batch processing, we have the ability in Starship to pull in a, a, a range of orders and process them all at once inside of the Starship application. So therefore you can sit there and print off labels and just start putting them on your boxes. And for those of you who might be using an EDI provider, like a True Commerce or SBS Commerce, we do have a workflow built around that platform as well. Um, so we can help you know, generate um, a file that we can you know, basically tell your EDI provider what was inside of each of those boxes. So therefore they can update your trading partners. Uh, if there is interest on the EDI workflow, it's not going to be gotten covered today's demo, but we can take that offline and, you know, uh, talk more about that specifically for you. E-commerce extensions, basically we have the ability, we're very niche in this area where we can write back to QuickBooks, but we also have the ability of writing back to uh, about 14 different e-commerce platforms today, um, all at the same time. So uh, when we put the tracking number in QuickBooks, we'll also put the quick, you know, the tracking number back in your Shopify cart or your Magento cart um, so that for you have a reference and no one has to manually update uh, that for you. 
And then we'll also have uh, provided you with the discounted CPP pricing or commercial plus pricing uh, for the post office, uh, where you don't get that with Shipgear today, as Shipgear only supports FedEx and UPS. So post office is of interest. Uh, we basically tell you why that you know, might be of interest to you when you're shipping uh, small, heavy type of packages that you can uh, benefit from some cost savings. Speaking of e-commerce, these are the different multiple carts and marketplaces that we support today. Um, so if you're using one of these applications uh, to generate orders and flowing them into your QuickBooks application, or maybe you're not flowing them in your QuickBooks application, and you want a direct integration to one of these, we support that as well. So again, we can talk offline about that workflow further. Uh, but again, we won't show you that workflow today, but I wanted to mention for those who might be uh, processing your e-commerce orders today in one of these shopping carts or marketplaces. So when we talk about post office, uh, kind of segueing into some cost savings, um, so we have three different types of uh, programs that the post office really provides to you. So you have your standard weight zone, which everyone is probably familiar with today. Um, so it's basically built on the weight and zone of the shipment and the distance to the recipient. Um, dim weight is not affecting the pricing in this situation. Uh, and then we also, you know, we find it's applicable for, you know, one to two pound packages, um, where basically standard weight zone is going to be your most beneficial, um, you know, type of pricing you can benefit from. When you get above two pound packages, when you get the three plus pounds, then the other um, types of pricing like flat rate or cubic could be coming into play, which many people uh, might not be aware of that, you know, could help them save some money. So in the flat rate uh, you know, packaging scenario here, um, you basically get the packaging supplies for free with no additional cost from your post office. You can either pick them up, you can have them ordered online and delivered to your door. Uh, it's sometimes the cheaper option over the priority, you know, the cheapest priority mail method overall. And basically if you can fit it in one of their packing supplies, an envelope, padded pack or a box up to 70 pounds, you can ship it and that's basically the rate you're going to pay. The cubic is probably the most unknown um, piece of the priority mail pricing that a lot of customers don't realize that they might qualify for. And being a V Technologies customer and a Starship customer, you know, we're going to provide you with this additional incentive um, that you can benefit from, where basically you can see, you know, much le um, a lot cheaper of a cost if you just put in your dimensions so we can understand if the package qualifies and in order to qualify, you have to be under a half cubic foot or under, um, and you'll benefit from this additional incentive that Starship will realize and automatically show you in the rate shop. Um, it is, um, it's the same price all the way up to 20 pounds. Um, so if you have anything over 20 pounds, um, cubic pricing would not apply for you. Um, but basically if you're a shipper shipping, you know, lightweight items, um, definitely you wanna make sure your dimensions are entered in Starship. And then I mentioned here, you can qualify for an additional incentive. Um, if you're doing over 100 priority mail pieces a week, um, you can qualify for a, a, even an additional incentive being a Starship user as well. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. <clears throat> so there's obviously, I mentioned a package, you know, a box, you know, basically standard length width height uh, divided by 1728 is basically how you're gonna calculate um, your cubic foot um, uh, measurement. So basically you can see here in the example I've provided the eight by eight by six um, is basically gonna come out to a, a 0.3 um, you know, cubic foot or a cube three as it's referred in the post office environment. And that would qualify for this cubic incentive I'm referring to. And then I give an, an example where a max dimension of 12 by 12 by six would max out at a cube five uh, type of packaging scenario, which would qualify for that additional incentive as well. On the left side here, we talk about a soft pack and an envelope, and the difference is basically we don't take in consideration the height of the package. It's only the length plus the width. And when you add those two dimensions up, as long as it doesn't exceed 36 inches, um, you basically look at the chart below and you'll figure out which tier you fall into. Uh, so you can see there, for example, you know anything in the middle there, 27 inches to 31 inches, you would be in that cube three um, uh, type of tier, so therefore you would qualify for that additional cube uh, for soft pack or envelope, whichever you're shipping. So when we talk about some examples here, um, so on the top por portion here, we have basically a standard weight zone. 
I have a three and a half pounds going to zone eight. Uh, basically off to the right, you can see it's going from Utah to Florida. Um, the at, cost you would see in Starship if you put no dimensions in um, is basically would be $17.61. On the flat rate side, if you use our the, the post office flat rate envelope in this example, a nine by 12 dimension, your cost would drop from $17.61 down to $6.95. If you chose not to use a flat rate envelope from the post office and wanted to use your own padded envelope at a nine by 12, it would be a cube one, which the cost would still be significant savings of $11.92. And then again, if you qualify for this high volume um, program with 100 priority mail pieces a week, you could drop that $11.92 down to $8.25. So you can kind of see the savings there anywhere from you know, uh, five dot, you know, basically 1066, you know, on the flat rate envelope, you know, and then down to 569 to 936 on the cubic side. So again, very significant by just either using flat rate or using, you know, dimensions inside of Starship itself to identify if this particular shipment can save you some money. On the example below is referring a box. So this example, I have a 10 pound shipment going to zone eight. The, again, the, what Starship would show you initially without any dimensions would be $36.32. In this example, I've had going in a medium uh, flat rate box with the post office, an 11 by 8 by 6. That drops it down to $12.80 with a savings of $23.52. And the cubic environment of using 8 by 8 by 6 type of box would be a cube 3. And that cubic incentive would drop it down to $14.02 with a savings of $22.30. So again, very significant when we start talking about dimensions, and those are the dimensions I'm gonna use in the example today uh, in the demo that I'm about to demonstrate here in a minute um, to kind of show you how the, you know, what the change looks like from no dimensions to these types of dimensions uh, that I have. So when we talk about identifying what might be applicable in Cubic um, you know, with you know, possibly post office, so if you gave you some examples here with liquids, powders, small heavy items, we talk about bars of soap, nuts and bolts. Um, I have even bowling balls on here um, where we did a, you know, a demo recently with a customer uh, and they were shipping bowling balls and they basically told me the dimensions of the box and by shrinking the box down by one inch, um, they were able to save almost $5 a package, um, you know, which is significant when you're doing any sort of volume. So. Again, just knowing and understanding what you're shipping, again, making sure you don't have a lot of air in your packaging is definitely going to help you succeed in saving you some money here. And then again, I just put another example, anything that's fitting in a box that, you know, a large flat rate box that's 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter by six, you know, or under, basically you can, you know, get it out uh, with these additional incentives here. And last but not least, I'm going to also talk about a shipping analysis that we work very closely with our partner, Visible Supply Chain, and who conducts these analysis on the behalf, you know, of our customers. Um, so basically, you know, they're looking to help reduce your costs with the major carriers. Um, in this example here in the screen that I'm on, you can see basically where they're, be, you know, have a current snapshot and then where the future snapshot will look like. And you can see kind of where they're going to tell you how uh, you know, what shipments could move priority mail uh, versus what should stay UPS ground or residential, et cetera, uh, and then kind of break up the overall cost savings on an annual basis based on the data you provide. What we ask from you as a customer is basically uh, we, we recommend three months of billing files from UPS or FedEx. Um, so therefore you can, um, you know, take the most advantage, take, have the most advantage uh, type of analysis done for you. Um, otherwise, you can give us any sort of, you know, length of time that you prefer. Uh, but again, we feel like three months is a good snapshot for them to do their thorough analysis to report back the type of savings that you might see uh, from the uh, analysis they conduct. Okay. So let me jump into the demo here quickly um, and show you the example I've created. Um, so when we talk about um, QuickBooks to Starship integration, um, I'll always like to start in the QuickBooks environment just to talk very quickly on some of the fields we bring in from QuickBooks. Um, so right off the top is we're going to be bringing in the ship to information. Um, so all of that will be brought in automatically. Um, the bill to section here is also mappable. Uh, we can use this uh, section here if you're doing drop shipping. 
um, type of business or just you want it to show coming from yourself, um, we can do that as well. Uh, the ship via will also be mapped in. So if you have a ship via already selected in this example, I have it coming in UPS. Uh, and then if you want to leave it blank, we can also take it in blank and let you rate shop it and bring back the service into QuickBooks um, on the line item itself. And I'll show you that what it looks like you know, when I bring the order back into QuickBooks. We'll also map over all your line items, as I mentioned earlier. So all your item numbers, your descriptions, the quantities that were ordered uh, for each item, and also the values associated to those. Uh, we do those particularly for international shipping, uh, LTL shipping, EDI shipping, all that information that is stored at the line item level inside of Starship. So therefore, this information doesn't have to be entered uh, repeatedly every time you uh, bring in the item itself. Um, so again, we'll map all that part of your standard implementation uh, for you. So I'll come back to this when I'm done with bringing the order in. <clears throat> so if this looks new to those of you might be on Starship today with our desktop client, uh, that's because it is new. It's our new web client that we're excited about. We're uh, like the feature. So if you do have interest after I go through the demo of wanting to try out the new web client over the desktop client, uh, please let us know. We'll be part of the poll. Uh, and we encourage you to uh, give it a try. It acts the same way as your desktop client. It is not cloud-based, so I like to put that out there as well. Our cloud-based solution will be out later this year into next year. Um, but again, when we talk about uh, logging in the Starship, this will be your kind of your main screen where all of your orders are gonna populate as you enter them in QuickBooks. Um, so we have the ability to integrate to your sales order, your sales invoice, or even your sales receipt the most commonly are your sales orders or your sales invoices that we can pull from. Here's the order that I've created in QuickBooks, that 8828 is brought in all this information. I have it filtered showing today's orders only. You can sort on any one of these columns um, that you might you know, benefit from. So some people wanna see all the orders for say, Peacock Home Builders, you can do that and it would list out all the orders for them for that particular time period. So to go and pull this order in, it would be simply clicking on the little box here, the truck icon. It would go out to QuickBooks, pull the information in that we just spoke of. So all the information will uh, populate here in one screen. So for those, again, who are new uh, or using our desktop client today uh, and looking at this, you'll notice one main thing is everything is on one screen versus having tabs across the top to go and click through to process your shipment. So we simplified that process. So everything here is in widgets, so you can click into any one of these widgets and change that, but you'll notice the sender has been mapped in from QuickBooks, same with the recipient, and we've also done an address validation, verifying the street address along with the zip code and checking for residential versus commercial. So that's a secondary validation that we do, um, so therefore it avoids any of those address correction fees you might have with UPS or FedEx. It's also pulled in your um, ship V information, billing your account, we also have the uh, capabilities of mapping to third parties um, or third party accounts. So if you do any of that type of shipping today and you need the ability to bring in that third party account, we just ask to have that account number in a field inside of QuickBooks so we can map and bring that in and set the right third party ID on our side. So therefore uh, we can make it show billing third party versus billing your own account. Um, the shipment status is just basically going to you know, show you, you know, how many days in transit it's going to take to get to this destination um, if it left today. And then basically we get into the nuts and bolts of Starship here with the packaging and the line items. So you'll notice it's done a rate already for UPS ground at the bottom. Um, it's using one package. I have both of my items inside of this one package that I've created as a custom box, which is basically my packaging. It's at seven pounds, so if I drill into this packaging view here, you'll notice here I have both of my line items, I mentioned my puck and my electrical cord, um, set to seven pounds. What I wanna bring attention to is that I have no dimensions here. So I have zero by zero by zero, which you can ship it that way. We don't you know, make you and require you to enter dimensions. However, you're gonna see what I'm about to do here is gonna be very applicable to show you any type of cost savings. So when I show you this here down at the bottom on the rate quote where it shows shop all, it's only gonna show you UPS because that's what the ship via was selected. But if I wanted to see my post office rates or I wanted to see my FedEx rates or any other carriers that we work with, you can simply hit shop all. 
And then what this is going to do is go out to the each API that we have set up for you on your license and pull back your negotiated rates and display those all in one screen here at the bottom. As that does that, <clears throat> so you'll notice here, um, so if I basically show you all the uh, shipments here and I just sort uh, lowest to highest by clicking on contract charges, you'll notice UPS is basically right up at the top at $15.42 based on a seven pound package with no dimensions. So you'll notice here my FedEx home delivery is right behind it and my priority mail um, is set to $26.75. So in this example, even though priority mail is going to get there in two days versus four days, um, you know, with uh, UPS, it's still a lot more expensive. However, if I go back into my packaging here and say I enter that eight by eight by six dimension and I shop all again, you'll now see that because this package qualifies, as we know, for a cube three, what the rate for priority mail is going to drop to. And you'll see that here come up in a second, where you'll see it's actually more beneficial um, to show you, and just move this to all, so you can see all the rates, and hit contract, and you'll now see my priority mail is ahead of UPS, and that $26 dropped to $12.77, and it's ahead of the $15.42 that UPS would charge me for this particular package. So there shows you kind of the impact and the rate shopping capabilities that Starship can offer you just by simply entering those three dimensions of saving you know, over $14 instead of paying the post office an amount of money that you shouldn't have paid them because you didn't enter dimensions to begin with. So if I wanted to, I would just simply click on the post office box there that I wanna shift this over to priority mail. And you'll now notice UPS is no longer displayed and now my priority mail account is selected and chosen and now I can go ahead and ship and process this order by hitting F3 or the icon down below here and then this will basically print my priority mail label and send the information back into QuickBooks all in real time. So here's basically we've created this smart label we call it. You don't have to use this type of label. You can just print to a thermal printer and have both your packing list and your label print together um, but basically it's you know one half is your label you print on the peel it off, print it on a or put it on the box, and the other half is your packing list uh, with showing two items in that package. You can customize this, put your logo on here, make it look and feel however you like, uh, but it has all the information that would need, be needed in that box for your customer to see. If I take us back into QuickBooks and show you that sales order again to show you the right back, you will see here, So you'll see here that it updated, you know, came in UPS, but we basically changed the service to post office. So we'll put the service type used and also the tracking number um, along with the ship date that you've shipped that package on back along with the 1277 as far as your freight cost. We do have the capabilities of turning freight costs off. So if you don't want anything written back as far as the freight cost, we don't have to. We can just put a tracking number back in QuickBooks if you like us to. Along with the workflow in Starship, you do have access to our dashboard as well. So our dashboard will have the um, capabilities for anybody to be logged into to kind of see um, information such as um, your, <clears throat> your ability to see different reports. Um, so here's like a history and status report, the shipped versus voided packages. Um, so you can kind of get an idea where you know, stuff is. Um, but also if you wanted to kind of see, uh, if you go into here, and I open my shared views, oops, that, sorry, my overview, um, you can kind of get an idea of all the different graphs and charts that you have access to here. So here's just an example of, um, you know, some different default charts that come with the license. So you can set this up however you want. You can move these around. Um, so here you can get an idea from week over week how many orders you're up by uh, versus how many you know, packages that resulted in along with total shipment cost that you, know, you have for that particular week over the week before. You have the ability as well as having a heat map, so you can kind of get an idea of where all of your packages um, are going. Uh, so you can kind of see I'm very heavy in the tri-state area here. Um, so again, if you want to drill in closer, you can, 
but this could be used as a marketing tool. Uh, maybe you're, you know, lacking orders in the Midwest and you want to, you know, put some more marketing efforts or sales efforts in the Midwest. This might be helpful for you to use as well in that regard uh, for your uh, overall uh, revenue. So with that being said, um, I think we're coming up right to the end. So I'm going to conclude there.